Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our mature student orientation. Our part three of the session is juggling roles as a mature student learner. My name is Navani Samaru Durga, and I am the coordinator of mature student success at the Center for Mature and Part Time Students. Um, today, our session will be let's go to the next slide. Give me one second, please. I'm just going to explain to you your Zoom experience today. So today at the session, what would you ask is, I know some of you probably would have used Zoom before, maybe or maybe not. So just some brief um, instructions for you. At the very top of your screen to the right-hand corner, it's speaker or gallery view. You can click speaker view just to see the person who's speaking at the moment. Um, we prefer that you do it that way so you're able to see that person and hear exactly what they're saying. We ask that you please keep your camera and microphone muted during the presentation so that um, everyone gets a great experience in the, in the session today. Using the chat feature, uh, please message the host for assistance. There's a few hosts here. Um, behind each and everyone's name should say staff. We've got a few peer mentors. We've got Sabina, who's our work study student. We've got a couple of peer mentors, Jennifer, uh, Paul, or Shawnee, that you'd be able to um, chat with if anything is going on that you need to connect with them. One of them, they'd be able to assist you. Uh, we ask that you please hold all the questions for the panelists until the, the question period. What we find is that during these sessions, the chat is pretty lively and we can't get to all the questions. Um, so we do understand there's urgent questions in between, but we will try our very best to do Q&A at the very end and answer those questions. And if we don't get to those questions, you can email me directly, um, which is acmaps.workie.ca and I'll be able to um, answer those questions after the session today. So moving on. The agenda for today is some welcoming remarks. Uh, sorry, Brian was unable to make it here today. So I will do the welcoming remarks. And um, I will also speak to uh, our ACMAPS services that we offer mature students after our land acknowledgement. We will then have Kathy Boyd Withers, who's a learning skills specialist, learning skills services, who will give a keynote. Um, very interesting topic that she has for you today as mature student learners. So I'll paying special attention to her. And after Kathy's session, we're gonna be having a mature students panel where we're gonna hear from two mature students with regards to their mature student experience at York University um, to make you feel a little bit more comfortable being new students at York. Uh, we'll also hear from Caroline Pinto who will talk about the York University Mature Student Organization Club on campus and how they'll be able to help you in your, in your transition to York University. We also have a a competition where we'll give away two gift cards to uh, new students coming in this year. Sabina, our work study student, will facilitate that activity for us. Well, at the very end, we'll have an icebreaker where you'll be able to meet other mature students in this session today. And you can connect, probably share your email address if you have questions. Um, you'll be able to make a few friends at that session and then we'll have closing remarks. Hoping to end exactly at 11 a.m. this morning, if not, just probably 10 minutes over or so. So please forgive us if we do happen to go over that timing. Now we'll move on to our land acknowledgement. So as this meeting is virtual, we're not all gathered in the same space. I recognize that, that this land acknowledgement might not be for the territory that you're currently on. We ask that if you that is the case, you take responsibility and acknowledge a territory you're on and the current treaty holders as a member of the York University community. We recognize that many Indigenous nations have long with long-standing relationships with the territories upon which York University campuses are located that precede the establishment of York University. York University acknowledges its presence on the traditional territory of many Indigenous nations. The area known as Takaranto has been caretaken by the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Huron-Wendat, and the Métis. It is now home to many Indigenous peoples. We acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. This territory is subject to the dish with the One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement to peacefully share and care for the Great Lakes region. Okay, so on to ACMAPS. So at the Center for Mature and Part-Time Students at York University, we have a very, various different things that we're here to help support our mature students, uh, part-time students or transfer students to the university. We have uh, success series workshops. Some of these workshops that we offer are time management, citations 101, learning remotely for mature students with families, um, cafe hours, student parents get togethers. Uh, and those sessions are the student parent get togethers, and the cafe hours are usually like drop in base. So you're able to come and meet other mature students on campus. And then we have, we do a lot of collaborative, collaborative workshops with our partners, our campus partners. So learning services, career education development, 
student um, counseling, health and well-being. So we offer quite a wide range of workshops. So um, at the end, we'll put in our events page link and you'll be able to view all the workshops that we have throughout the year. We also have a mature student peer mentoring program. This program is where you'll get to meet third and fourth year level uh, peer mentors that you're able to come in and speak with um, for one-to-one -one appointments. Right now we're doing those via Zoom. And you're able to just chat with these mentors with regards to maybe there's a situation with a professor that you want to um, talk to someone about and you don't know how to approach that situation. Maybe it's you want to find out about time management, like, okay, how do I juggle work, school, family life? Some of these peer mentors will be able to assist you with that because that's what they're going through as well. So please reach out to acmaps at uq.ca if you want to book a one-to-one -one appointment with one of the peer mentors, they'll be happy to help you. We also have a mature student first year experience program. This program is created by my director and a couple of our collaborative um, colleagues across campus, uh, learning skills services, uh, counseling and career education development where they put together modules that a student would be able to go in on e-class and, and get help in building skills to be successful at university. These modules will offer 24 seven. You're able to go on e-class and do them however you, you please. If you wanna do them late at night, if you wanna do them early in the morning, if there's no set time that you meet the professor or the professor does um, lecture or anything like that, it's just there that you're able to go in from September to April and view them and learn the information that you need at that time. So moving on. I'm going to introduce our keynote speaker today, Kathy Boyd Withers. Kathy has worked as a learning skills specialist at York University Learning Skills Services for many years. She believes strongly in the transformational power of education and in fostering lifelong learning in students at all levels. Her background includes a York PhD in sociology as well as teaching experience at the university and college. I'm gonna pass it over to Kathy to begin sharing her screen and then she can start her keynote. Go ahead, Kathy, I'll stop sharing right now. Thank you so much. And I'm delighted to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, as I get my PowerPoint up for you, if you're comfortable just sharing in the chat what you're studying, what program you're going into, uh, I always kind of like to see um, you know, who I'm talking to. So if you're comfortable with that, you just click on chat if you don't see it in your in your menu right now, it's probably under options. And feel free to just put it in there. It'll take me a second to get my screen up, hopefully not long. <laughs> and uh, and we'll see who we've got out there. Okay. I see some people are weighing in. I'll just take a very quick glance. I won't read them all out, but you all can see them. What I love about sessions like this is just the variety, right? It really shows you um, just a huge variety of learning that can happen at university, right? So we've got all kinds of stuff. We've got psych, we've got kinesiology, media, sociology, after my own heart, um, <laughs> psych, yeah, cognitive science, design, biomed, Law, Law and Society, Chem, great. Um, so welcome and thank you for sharing. Feel free if, you, if some of you haven't weighed in and you want to, you're welcome to do that. Okay, so as Navani said, I'm Kathy and I am a learning skills specialist at York. Um, first of all, I just wanna remind you how, how great a choice you've made in coming to York and how glad we are that you're here. And again, if you're comfortable in, in using chat, maybe you can tell us what you're most excited about coming here to York, and maybe what you think your biggest challenges will be, if you're comfortable sharing that, okay? So what are you most excited about? And what do you think your biggest challenges will be? Um, and again, if you wanna put that in the chat, you can. I'll give it a minute just to see if anybody's weighing in. Um, yeah, excited about learning something new for sure. New experiences, it's a whole new environment. Um, it's okay to have challenges too, <laughs> we all do. Balancing school with full-time work, right? Excited about starting the program, uh, making a big career change, that's awesome, wow. 
challenges um, about, you know, fitting in with a lot of younger students. That's a very common feeling for people in your position, right? Um, new chapter in life, feeling, learning about stuff where you can make a difference. Oh, that's so great. Excited to be learning nervous because it's been a while. And again, I would imagine probably every one of you, whether you're writing it in the chat or not, <laughs> may well feel that way. Balance, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for sharing. And, you know, feel free to kind of read through. I think if, if nothing else, it'll re and reinforce for you that you're not alone, right? Often when we start a whole new thing like this, it's a bit scary and we feel like nobody else is feeling the way we're fe feeling. But I think just by reading the chat from, you know, all of your fellow students here, you're probably already realizing, okay, I'm not alone and you're not. <laughs> all right, so today I'm gonna talk about a, a fair bit of stuff. I'm gonna keep an eye on the time. Um, I don't have too long. So we're not gonna go into great detail. I want you to just listen. Please don't feel you have to write everything down and remember everything today. Um, hopefully a few things will really stand out for you and, and help you feel a bit more confident about starting in September. But these messages um, you'll be getting from different sources throughout. Okay, so this is just sort of touching on some of the ways to get you started on the right path. Uh, our learning outcomes, I'm gonna start by talking about learning skills services where I work. Um, so that's the first part. Uh, then I'm hoping that you'll get an idea of the time expectations for university, because that'll help you create the conditions for your own success. Understanding the importance of having supportive routines and structure around your school life. Uh, understand a little bit of what we mean by active self-directed learning. And always the importance of you, of your health, your well-being, balance, all of that contributes to academic success. All right, so I'm going to start by talking about learning skill services where I work, and maybe I can just pop in the chat the website address. Um, so if you want to click on that and have that up in your browser so you can save. Unfortunately, you can't copy and paste from the chat, which is annoying, but you could copy from the address bar on your computer. So if you want to copy that, that's great. So Learning Skill Services is one of the academic supports uh, here for all students, okay? We work with all York students at any level, any age. I have worked with students from, you know, the brand new, fresh faced, straight out of high school, all the way up to, um, I think a few years back, there was a student who was um, 80 or approaching 80. Um, awesome person, right? Really enjoyed being at university. So the whole range. And our role is to help you identify how you learn best and help you develop the learning skills, the organizational strategies that will help you achieve your goals here at university. And some of these are things like time management, effective study strategies, academic reading skills, presentation skills. We have all kinds of material on topics that you need no matter what you're studying. So our services include workshops that are open to all students. Uh, you would go to our website to find out how to register for those. They will start up again after classes begin in September. Um, currently, we're offering them all through Zoom remotely, given the times. <laughs> and uh, uh, later in the year, perhaps, or early next year, we may switch back to having in, per in person or some in person. It's, it's all a work in progress right now. Nobody quite knows what's going to be happening. <laughs> We also offer a service uh, we call academic peer coaching, where you can sign up for a one on one with one of our peer team. There's a picture of our peer team from last year, actually, no, the year before last, just before shutdown for COVID. Um, we have a, a, a team of some great learning skills peers. They are uh, undergrads and they're um, really good at what they do. And uh, again, different ages and everything else. So don't feel just because maybe they're younger than you, some of them, you can't benefit from uh, their help if that's what, what you need. So we do that. And again, you'll see on our website when that starts, it usually doesn't start until a few weeks into the term. And then we have all kinds of information on our website. 
Uh, so just click your way through, give yourself a bit of time if you have, you know, a half hour or an hour and you just want to see what's there. You'll see we have all kinds of helpful uh, information and resources, even worksheets, you know, to help you out and so on. This is our current list of all of our topics. I think we have now 12 or 13 of them. They vary depending on the time of year. I'm not going to read the whole list because you can uh, you can read it for yourself or go to our website and find out more information. But certainly at the beginning of term, time management is always a very popular one. Uh, I bet you people are probably better at time management than perhaps a brand new student coming straight out of high school. But I have to tell you that every time I run the time management workshop, I remember things for myself that maybe I knew once but have forgotten, right? So it's always helpful. Um, another one called uh, Learning Power, Boost Your Learning Power, that talks about some study strategies that are supported by research on learning. Um, reading and note taking is another one. There's always lots of reading. Um, another one called Starting Off Strong for Brand New Students. Uh, we also have something called Secrets of Academic Success. That's a good one at the beginning as well. This workshop is specially designed for you, but you'll see some overlap with some of our other topics. So that might be an idea to go come, come uh, September to sign up for as many of our workshops as you want um, to help solidify some of these skills and build your confidence. If you attend eight or more of our workshops, we give you a certificate. We call it the passport to success. So that's kind of an incentive to, um, to come to more than one. All right. If you have any questions about learning skill services, um, just keep them in mind or maybe put them in the chat. We'll pick them up perhaps later. So now I'm gonna go through just a few basic areas of study tips for university learning. So I'm gonna go through each one at a time. And again, we're just dipping our toe in the water here, okay? We're not going into great depth on anything, but a few things for you to keep in mind. So the first one is to keep a routine and make time for learning, okay? I know we know this, um, but university learning is very deep learning and can be quite complex. Um, I'm not saying that to make you nervous, <laughs> you know that already. Um, but also just to make you understand it's not instant, it's not supposed to be, right? So you do need to carve out enough time. And the guideline we always give is that think of full-time studies as a full-time job. That's 35 to 40 hours a week for a full course load. In most cases, a full course load is five courses per semester, um, depending on the program. So it's important, I think, for all new students to understand this. So again, you can create the conditions for your own success. I think the most fundamental prerequisite for academic success is to give yourself sufficient time for your studies. And you need to sort of plan other responsibilities around this. Be realistic, be kind to yourself. My experience of mature, mature students over the years I've worked here is, first of all, you're awesome. I love working with mature students. Mature students um, have all that life experience to bring to their experience at university, which is really helpful. And as a group, um, you tend to be quite goal directed and, you know, fairly mature, <laughs> hence the name mature students. <laughs> But I've also noticed mature students tend to be very busy people who often put themselves last on their priority list. So that is why I really want to stress how much time is necessary for learning. It's just the way the learning is structured. So if you are working, you know, for, for example, a full time job and thinking you'll be able to do full time university studies, um, that's probably not realistic. You're not going to be able to uh, feel that you can give what is needed in either direction. So it's important to understand the time and needs for university. It's also important to have structure and supportive routines around your studies, okay, that work best for you. That means boundaries around your work time, your school work time, because everyone also needs uh, some time where you're not working when you're not working at your job, when you're not working at your studies. And you want to respect these boundaries 
first of all, yourself. You know, you have the right to be here. And you may need to ask others also to respect these boundaries around your schoolwork. Sometimes uh, reading, for example, academic reading, which is very important to academic success, studying, it sort of looks invisible to other people. It doesn't look like work, right? So for example, if, you're, if you have a family or whatever, it's probably worth sitting down and just kind of renegotiating some of the normal boundaries and, and let them know that this is really important to you and that it will be taking up time. Having some good study space is helpful. Uh, the ideal, of course, is if you can, to have a dedicated study spot in your home somewhere that's just for you, where there aren't many distractions, where you have some space to put you know, some of your study materials. I understand that's not possible for everyone. So you need to just do your best with what's possible for you. Uh, the essentials, both at home and on campus, is to have your own reliable, up-to-date laptop, uh, tech, whatever works for you, um, and a strong, dependable Wi-Fi signal. Obviously, we do have Wi-Fi on campus, um, but, uh, you know, everything is done pretty much online. Not everything. There's some going to be some in-person services, but it is essential to have tech that works well for you and preferably that's not shared with everyone else in your home. Again, only you know what's possible for you. If you are going to be doing in-person classes on campus, um, do some exploring uh, when you're on campus and find some good study locations that are going to work for you and that will help you feel more productive. Uh, the libraries will be open with restrictions about numbers, but there's study space there. Um, and so look around and see, see what looks as if it may work for you, because if you're doing in-person classes, you may have time in between and so on. So, you know, stake out a few good study spaces for yourself, um, both at home and on campus. So this tip is so crucial. Be an active, self-directed learner. That is the key to success at university. Active independent learning. So the model of learning at university is that in class time is for presenting the approach and ideas, having maybe a bit of room for discussion and so on. But the learning piece is up to you. And, um, you know, that involves reading, doing the readings for the course, reviewing um, on an ongoing basis is very helpful. Rather, don't just wait until a test is coming up. Um, you know, it's that's what we mean by independent learning is to build your learning day by day, week by week, outside of class time, learn in class, obviously, too. But that's all of this other stuff, working on your assignments and so on is up to you outside of class time. A good guideline for starting is for every in class hour, make sure you have room in your schedule for at least an hour and a half of independent study time. Now, that's not an exact correspondence to that particular hour of material in the lecture. I mean, just in general, in terms of creating an effective study schedule for yourself. And if you were to do the math on that, you would get to that 37 and a half to 40 hour work week I mentioned. In most cases, your class schedule um, doesn't fill up your schedule, your in-class time. And incoming students are often... Uh, sort of um, surprised, <laughs> you know, they go, oh, this is great. Look, I have all this free time in between my classes. But you soon learn uh, that's not free time. That's your independent learning time. So don't be deceived, okay? If you look at your schedule and you think, well, I, own, I have 15 in-class hours and I'm working a 35-hour full-time job, that's 50 hours. Oh, that's a lot. But you know, I can do it. No, it's, it's not the 15 hours. It's the 15 plus the 22 and a half of study and independent learning, right? So that's how we get at that idea of it as a full-time job. And again, a reminder that we have all kinds of workshops and resources at Learning Skills Services to help you um, understand you know, the, the academic skills needed um, and to help you kind of try organize your time in a way that's going to work for you. Another helpful tip 
in terms of your active independent learning, it's not, it's, I, I like to think of it as guided independent learning, you know, because you have uh, your course instructor, the professor, you might have teaching assistants, you have services like ours, right? So independent doesn't mean totally alone. And there are guides for you. One of the most helpful things is the course outline or syllabus in every course. You get one in every course. Think of it as your guide and your map to that course. So first of all, it's giving you the key information about the deadlines and the requirements, which is important. Obviously, you want to keep track of those. But it also usually has other information like the course objectives or the course goals. Often students read them once at the beginning of term and never look at them again. Not a good idea. Those are really helpful. They're describing to you exactly what the instructor wants you to learn. So use that also as a guide to the course. Don't just read the syllabus once at the beginning, keep it on hand and revisit it often throughout the course. All those different goals, the objectives, the themes of the course, they should become clearer to you, uh, much more meaningful as the course progresses. So it's also a good way of monitoring your learning in a broad sense. If, you know, four weeks into the course, you take a look again at those uh, objectives, and it still doesn't make any sense to you, it probably means you're not quite grasping what the prof wants you to learn. So then it might be worthwhile digging in a bit deeper or going to talk to your TA or your professor or whatever. So do keep an eye on the course outline and uh, keep it on hand and visit it. I would say at the beginning, almost every week, <laughs> you know, or every couple of weeks. It's also a good guide for studying for exams because you can look over, you know, oh, what did we cover so far in the course, right? And that will help orient you towards uh, deciding what is most important in terms of your studying and so on. Let's talk about in-person versus remote learning. What a world we are living in right now. <laughs> I've been saying this in different ways for how long is it now? 17, 18 months. <laughs> Every time we think there's an end in sight, things change. Anyway, you all know that. You don't need me to tell you. Life is a grand experiment, and we need to keep an open mind and just embrace day by day what happens. So in September at York, we are likely to have a balance between in-person and remote learning. And every program is different. Every person is different. If you're looking for what is the right balance between those two, you're not alone. <laughs> Probably right now, no one knows totally <laughs> what the right balance would be. Very much depends on you as a person. Also, you may not have much control over it, right? Your program may decree this is in person, this is remote. I do want to stress, though, um, to remember that online courses, no matter whether they're synchronous, that means in real time, where you attend the lecture, but you know, you're know you attending it via Zoom or whatever, or asynchronous, where the materials are there for you and you can kind of watch the recorded lecture or whatever at any time, regardless of the type, of course, well, whether it's online or in person, they all require you know, a similar amount of time. Okay, so keep in mind that just because, and again, sometimes people are deceived by this, right? They look, oh good, it's asynchronous. I'll just tuck it in around everything else. You know, uh, it'll work out, right? No, I think it's, it's better to plan. Um, and here's another way of looking at the time requirement. For every course, you would want about seven and a half to nine hours every week, including, you know, lecture time or whatever. And again, all you math geniuses out there, you'll see I'm basically presenting the same time information in different ways, whatever resonates for you as a guideline, okay? You think if you're taking five courses and you take that nine hours, that's 45 hours a week, which is a full-time job, uh, a bit of a heavy duty full-time job, or you go somewhere in between if you take eight hours each week or whatever. Uh, and then pay attention to, uh, is it working for you? You know, are you able to get the reading done and are you understanding and so on? If you go to our website, uh, you will also see uh, something called the Student Guide to Remote Learning. 
which is kind of another site that you can click on from our website. And there's all kinds of information there for you about remote learning. If you're feeling a bit nervous about that, there's even links. You have to click through. There's so much stuff there. So again, you might want to give yourself a half hour sometime and just see what's there. Um, you can even in there find some links to Zoom training videos and stuff like that. So if that's something that's making you a little nervous, don't worry. There's lots of materials to help you. Uh, motivation is important too, right? So make sure that you identify and stay connected to your motivation. As I mentioned, uh, mature students are usually quite goal-directed, and so that can motivate you for sure. But don't forget to enjoy being at university. You know, it's not all about just getting through it to, to get that piece of paper <laughs> at the end or whatever. Um, you've made a great choice. You know, as, as uh, people with more life experience than students who come straight through, you know, if, if you've been working or whatever, you don't, there's not that many occasions in life where you have time to kind of explore a little bit more, right? And, and university is busy. The time demands for the learning are heavy, but there's also so much to offer at university. So do follow your interests, you know, and keep an open mind as well. Another tip to help you stay motivated, focus on the learning, not the grades, okay? And remember, it's okay to not know things at first because you're here to learn. I often find mature students and older people coming back to university, we're not used to being in that learner position. You know, that, that beginner's mind where it's just an open book and you have no assumptions, right? We're not used to that anymore. We sort of feel like we're supposed to know everything. You're not, okay? So let that go. You're a brand new student here. Open up the beginner's mind of, hey, let's see what happens. Uh, and don't stress too much. If at first you're finding it a little hard or a bit even overwhelming, be patient with yourself. Um, you're here to learn. So that's okay. Um, there's something called the growth mindset. I don't know if you're familiar with this. It's, it's very popular and very useful within the field of education. And it's the best mindset for learning. So what is that mindset? Believing that you can grow, learn, and succeed. Okay, so again, that open mind. I can do this, right? Understanding effort counts more than just natural ability. It's not a question of, hey, you're either smart or you're not. You know, that's not how it works, right? You can grow your intelligence through work and developing your learning and so on. Growth mindset learns from everything. If obstacles crop up, those are opportunities, growth opportunities. No one likes it. You know, when, when uh, something happens that we don't want to happen, but we can always learn from it, right? So try to, you know, foster that mindset in yourself. And I, I love this phrase, the power of yet. If you remember just one thing from all the talking I've done so far, far I want you to remember that, the word yet. I don't know this yet, but I'm learning, is much, much better than, um, I can't do this. This is really hard. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it yet because you're learning. You're here to learn. And that's such a powerful change in your mindset. So I really encourage you just to put that word in your mind yet, yet, okay? You're growing, you're learning, and that's the growth mindset. And then my final point, look at my time. Yep, I'm almost done, <laughs> um, is to always pay attention to your health, your well being, balance. That's essential for energy, especially during these times, right? So always make some time and space for your physical and mental health and well being, no matter how busy you are. It's almost like the busier you are, the more you need to find little pockets of space to look after yourself and renegotiate other responsibilities and commitments if you need to. Also remember, you know, having some fun connecting socially, you know, with classmates and so on. It's a bit harder now in the remote world, but it's not impossible. And having some relaxation times are an important part of university life and they contribute to academic success. You may feel they don't, but um, having a chance to recharge and enjoy the experience 
will also help your learning. So this is something called the wellness wheel. You may have seen it before. There are different versions. The point here is that you are a whole person, right? And there's not just your academic and your work life. There's all different areas of your life. You can see there your emotional life, you know, your physical well-being, spiritual even, you know, um, what gives you meaning in life, right? Social, all of that. And of course, academic, you know, all of those different areas. Um, you want to sort of be, I think of it as filling up your tank in all of the important areas of wellness, not just work and study, because when we get really depleted in all those other areas, we don't have the energy, you know, and energy is just as important as time, right, for learning, because if you have carved out time, but you have no energy to bring to the time, it's not going to help you. So remember that time spent on self-care actually contributes to your academic success. And welcome again. We are delighted you're here and you can do this. Uh, thank you. That's all I have to say for today. Thanks so much, Kathy. What, what an inspiring presentation. You had, there was a comment um, in the chat where one of the students says, your words are so heartwarming and I was worried about all the things you're talking about. So you made her feel a lot better. Oh, thank, thank you for that. Thanks. We're going to move on. I'm just going to share my screen here. Give me one second. Can everyone see my screen? Hopefully, yes. Okay, great. So we'll move on. So at this point in time of our presentation, we're going to hear from two of our ACNAP's peer mentors. Uh, we have Paul Gardell, who started York, I believe it was last year, and um, Paul is doing a BA in Bachelor of Commerce at York University. And Jennifer, who I believe is going into her fourth year in health studies, she's majoring in health studies. So we're gonna hear stories about their experience as mature students on campus. Um, Paul started amidst the pandemic and doing a lot of online uh, courses. And, and so Jennifer has also done online courses. So I'm gonna hand it over to Paul to begin telling his story of his experience as a mature student learner on campus. So go ahead, Paul. Thank you, Navini. Okay, so uh, my name is Paul. And um, well, a couple of years ago, I thought about it and I gave it a, ser a serious thought and I decided that it's never late to go back to university. And I say go back because uh, when I was much younger, I quit university in my first year. And then now later I decided to come back because I decided that it is never too late for that. And in my first year, I, uh, my positive experience in my first year was uh, at York University was the fact that uh, I found out that York University had all the resources for students uh, to succeed in their studies. For example, you can go at the Scott Library and you will have the computers, internet, scanners, printers, photocopiers, anything you need to uh, work on your assignments and uh, even books and studying rooms if you have time uh, for that in the library. And um, there are also free workshops available for all the students. They are free workshops and, and they are really good and they are designed to help you expand your knowledge and your skills. And uh, well, I learned that uh, there are some positive aspects of being a mature student. And for me is the fact that I had a number of years of working experience, working with people. And that is going to be really important for you to succeed in your university studies, because you are going to be working with your schoolmates in groups and your ability to uh, work with people that will definitely help you succeed in your studies. And I also learned that time management was a skill that I would need to succeed in university, but that was one of my weaknesses. I suddenly found myself that I had a family life, I had a university life, 
And I wasn't sure how to balance the two. I wanted to devote 100% of my time to my family and 100% of time to my studies. I just couldn't do it. So I contacted uh, ACMAPS and I found out that they had a workshop called time management. And so I took this workshop and there I learned that, uh, well, I learned the basic skills that I needed to, to do my study and to balance my life and my, my family life and my uh, university life. So I learned that I always had to have a calendar with me. A calendar is, a, is going to be your best friend during your academic years in university. And after I had learned to manage my time, I even realized that I had some time available. So last year, I contacted uh, Navini for a volunteering position, and she got back to me, and uh, she gave me the opportunity to volunteer as a, as a peer mentor. And uh, throughout that, I learned that when there, is a, when there is a will, there is a way. And uh, that is especially true during the, during the pandemic. And I say that because I had to take all my courses online. And how did I deal with it? Well, all I had to do was log on Zoom on a certain date every day. And I was able to, I was able to uh, interact with my classmates, with my professors. I could make a question and I could get a reply instantly. I, could, I didn't find much difference between being in person in a classroom and taking my courses online. Is it doable? Yes, it is doable because I'm very satisfied with the learning that I acquired in all the courses that I have taken online. And uh, the professors are also accommodating, for example, if for any reason you cannot uh, write down, write your exam on a, on a certain date, you can always talk to your professor and your professor can accommodate you uh, if you are not able to write your exam on, on, on that date when you need to do it. Uh, so that's, uh, that's just, for your, just for your information, just so that you know that uh, online courses are doable, yes. And uh, well, you're going to find that university is hard work. I really don't want to disappoint the, the incoming students because university is hard work. You're going to struggle and, uh, but look, it's better that you struggle than if you don't struggle in your studies because you learn while you're struggling. And actually, according to CNN, Mr. Trump, struggled struggled during his high school years and at one point he even paid one of his classmates to write his assignment now i'm not saying that you're going to do that i'm just saying that uh, you're going to struggle you may fail one course or two courses but that's not going to be the end of your university life you can always make it up you can always repeat your courses up to three times. So my advice to all these new students is to stay focused, be positive, and willing to take a challenge. So welcome to York University and good luck. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for your Thank story. You. It's very inspiring. Um, over to you, Jennifer. Thanks, Navani. Hi, everyone. Um, so I came to university because when I was younger, I wasn't financially able to attend university. So I only attended college and have been working since then. However, um, knowing wanting to move up the career ladder, I knew that a degree was required. A lot of places would decline me because I didn't have a degree. So um, I, my decision to come to York was because York provided me with a flexible school schedule. Um, since like many of you, I also work full time, 35 hours a week. Um, and my experience as a York mature student on campus was eye opening. 
I thought I was going to be the odd one out. I thought that I was, you know, going to be the only mature student there. However, I attended um, orientation just like many of you are doing today. And I met a lot of other mature students along with mature students in my program as well. Um, so coming to university as, the, uh, as a mature student provided me with um, additional wealth of knowledge. I was able to bring my work experience to my study. Um, and I think this helped gear me towards my success um, in my education today. Time management, again, is very important. And while I don't have any family obligations, I have work obligations and balancing each um, work and school full time was, was crucial for me. And I had to ensure that one didn't interfere with the other and choosing my classes wisely to ensure that was possible. And with the pandemic, I've also been working from home. So I kind of have the experience of pre-pandemic where I was in person and online um, with the pandemic. So I do have that experience and I, was, I find that both are doable. You are able to go to class, you are able to work, you are able to do online courses and you are able to work. You just have to make sure that you find that happy medium balance between your schedule and your work. And most places will accommodate you if you are um, a student. So just talk to your employer and make sure that they are okay with the schedule that you have and that you can make that work. Um, so again, with the pandemic, I have been working from home and I've um, been studying from home, but it's really exhausting to be staring at a computer for over 12 hours. <laughs> so I actually leave my house after I am done work. And my favorite study spot is to study in my car at Tim Hortons. You know, it's a very awkward spot to study, but I love going there, just sitting in my car with my windows down or windows up um, and my noise canceling headphones and just doing my lectures in my car. People walk by and they think I'm weird, but it's my place and no one else is really in my space to interfere with me. So that's my study spot. Sometimes I'll go to the park, I've gone to um, the lake and I've tried many other places, but the Tim Hortons seems to be the best place for me. <laughs> um, and so I actually became involved as a peer mentor with ACMAP because I found that in my classes that I was taking, there was a lot of mature students who was seeking out other mature students and unsure where they were, they were struggling, they didn't know what to do, they were unsure of time management. And a lot of them were reaching out to me individually and um, asking me for support or how do you balance your life? You seem to be doing it so well. And you know, you're on top of your classes, you're on, you, you are so participative in all of your classes. And I thought this was a good moment for me to be able to provide my experience and provide my knowledge to all the other mature students. So ACMAPS really gave me a place to be that platform. So I'm thankful that I'm a peer mentor with ACMAPS. And um, my final advice for you as an incoming mature student is to do what you can with the skills that you have and take on what you can manage and don't burn yourself out. Seek support through ACMAPS or other services that have been offered because what you're feeling is also what others are feeling. Good luck. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay, so we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on to York University Mature Student Organization. I'm going to invite Caroline Pinto, who's a representative from Yemsil, to just speak a little bit about the club. Go ahead, Caroline. Hi guys, thank you so much for having me. And uh, I, I can totally relate to everything that we've been talking so far. And all right, so just to say a little about me, I'm Caroline Pinto. I am in the LLM program, must, in the master's program uh, for law and in international business and intellectual property law. I am a recently uh, moved immigrant here to Canada and everything is a very, very new experience to me here. Um, I am back into studying almost after an eight year gap. I have been working as a lawyer where uh, I've been putting a lot of hours in. Right now, I'm also walking along with my studies. And um, 
and I'm also a mother to a toddler. So for to all the parents uh, on this group, I hear you. We all wear this invisible capes and we should actually give a pat on our back ourselves because uh, uh, if anyone knows how to multitask and get everything done, it's, you know, the, all of us put together, especially when you're juggling kids and studies as well. So anytime, anytime you want to talk, you want to reach out, please reach out to us, you know, just talk to us. Um, uh, as far as YAMSO goes, that's a York University Mature Student Organization. It is a student-run club which was, um, which was established since 2004. It is the only student-run club which we have over here that also includes all the mature students, uh, including parents as well. And it is a cohort for you to have a safe space, to reach out, to socialize, uh, to talk about, or simply or simply have some company to you know, uh, relate to whatever you're going through. Our main goal is to actually serve the Yorks community of mature students, both those who are attending campus in person or remotely. And how do we do that? We reach out uh, through app maps, to, with the aim to connect with you, uh, to support you, in, you know, to navigate through the resources, through the NOC, uh, York uh, website, to all the courses that you might have, or any challenges you might fi find you know, in between all of these. Um, in the past, we have arranged a lot of pub nights, coffee meetups, conversation meetups. Uh, we also have a lounge at the Veneer College at 113B on the ground floor. But due to the COVID-19 pandemic situation, um, we, are still, we are still working everything remotely. Having said that, we have also planned a lot of things in the fall semester for you, so don't lose heart. And we're actually counting on you to make the participation like uh, really, really epic. We have uh, raffle cards, we have trivia nights, we have uh, movie, uh, you know, movie nights planned up. We also have a virtual dance event that we have planned up. We have social events that will happen monthly and um, a few surprise events here and then. But if I give you all, all of it yet, you know, it may not have any surprise elements. So I'm just waiting for you to participate. And uh, we are all, we also have presence on Instagram. So you can always follow us on Instagram at the rate uh, Y-U-M-S-O. I will drop in the details. Um, uh, like any other student club, you know, the volunteers are the best part uh, about running a club. So if any of you wish to give us time, uh, any of you wish to give us a suggestion, feedback, or, you know, uh, just be a part of YAMSO, you're always welcome. You can always reach out to us. And if you have any questions or if you just want a person to talk to, we have an entire group uh, ready for you. And, you know, we can help each other out during this pandemic and be there for each other. Uh, finally, my advice is, uh, I think is the most powerful advice I have got throughout and it has been succinctly, you know, shared by Kathy today, the power of yet. So do not overwhelm yourself. It is a learning phase. So, you know, we have too many things to handle, you know, work, studies, children, homes and everything else. So just take one step at a time and always reach out to people. Sometimes just to be there makes a lot of difference. And that's about it and enjoy the process. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Okay, we're gonna go to our next slide. Competition time. So here I'm gonna pass my screen over to my work study student, Sabina, and she will do this activity for us. Go ahead, Sabina. Hi, everyone. Let me just share my screen. So we're gonna pick two names from this um, wheel, and it's everyone who is in the room at the moment. So I know there might be a couple of people who've left, but otherwise, um, and you each get a York University book voucher. So good luck. Rita, are you in the room still? I hope so. If you're yes. here, wonderful, Rita. Can you private message me your email address, please? Congratulations on the second name. In the room, drop your name in the chat or just unmute yourself so we know you're here. Hi, 
Are you in the room, Lillian? Going once, going twice. <laughs> she was earlier, so. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to spin again? And then... Sure, go ahead. She's not in the room right now. Michael, are you in the room? Michael said? Yes. Hey. Good. Congratulations. Congratulations to both winners. Michael, can you please private message me your email address and I'll send you the bookstore gift card. Just gonna share Wonderful. my screen again. Hopefully everyone can see my screen. That. Okay, so now it's time for our quick icebreaker game, a 10 minute mixer. In this game, what we're gonna ask for you to do, we're gonna, I'm gonna put you into breakout rooms randomly. And what we're gonna ask you to do is just mix and mingle with each other. Um, I'm giving you three questions. So why you're gonna talk about why did you return to school now? What program you're in and what is your passion with each other? So I'm hoping that, um, should be able to do this. We have about 52 people, I think, when I last saw the numbers, 42 now. Um, we're going to be just for you to mix and mingle and give everyone a turn to talk, to speak in the group would be wonderful. I'm going to have some of my peer mentors just go around the rooms um, and just chat with you guys as well. Sorry, let's go back here. And so give me one second for me to put you into breakout rooms. I'm going to have to stop sharing and then breakout rooms. So we have 36 now. Okay. Okay, let's create. So I'm going to open the rooms. Just please accept and join. Can you send me to another room? Okay, let me I got me. put one with um, Paul. Oh, so I'm gonna move you to Jennifer. Move to no, Shawnee's in that one. Give me one second. Um, Jennifer, you move to room one. Well, some people may not want to join a room. That's totally okay. You could just wait for the students to come back. One, two, three, four. Room six only has four. Okay. Just gonna put questions in there. Now, if I, I have another meeting um, in a few minutes. Is it okay if I- yeah, No problem, okay. Kathy. Thanks um, so much. Thanks so Take much. I, yeah, you made I'll my I'll see you at three actually. today. I'll see you at three today. I'll see you at three, right, right. Okay. I'll just Take put care. a quick goodbye in the chat so that people- All right, no problem, and Kathy. And then I'll head off. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thanks. Take care.